Hi, this is John's dad. Thanks for coming back to my channel. This will be the first of many videos on my equipment. This one will be a lot on electronics, and then I'll move into the big three and miscellaneous and the kitchen and all of those things eventually. But this is equipment today. And just to get started, uh, our motto is here to uh, learn while we go. And part of that is the planning process and, and making decisions on what you're going to take. I am not an ultralight backpacker. Uh, my backpack for a week long trip, fully loaded with food, assuming no resupply, and for first day's worth of uh, water, I'm approaching 40 pounds quite often. And I am trying to get that down uh, one piece of equipment at a time and by using less water, to, uh, planning my water better, that kind of thing. I'm working on that. Um, but people that have a pack weight of 16 pounds, I don't have any idea how they do that safely and comfortably, but they do, and that, so that's up to them. That's not me, so uh, I won't be pushing any kind of lightweight alternatives, and not to the extreme anyway. So when I am packing and planning for a trip, I'll look at the climate for the area of the country that I'm going to, and I take the, the, <coughs> the highs and lows, I'll go 10 degrees Fahrenheit lower, and 10 degrees Fahrenheit higher, that's about five degrees Celsius. And that's the range I'll actually plan for. I'll assume that it's gonna be colder. If it's at elevation, I have to take off, um, for every thousand feet, you have to take off three degrees on top of whatever the climate says, because it does get cooler as you go up. And so I do that for, for um, finding the temperature. I also look at the forecasted or the climate expected uh, precipitation and I assume that that's what I'm going to get. I'm not going to assume it's going to be drier than normal. I have a spreadsheet with all of my gear. In column C I have a yes no flag and I go through and I reset it all to N when I'm planning and then I walk through the spreadsheet line item by line item. Do I want to take this piece of equipment yes or no? And I put a little, a little yes in there. That could be a big yes. It's a yes. Whatever size it is I put a yes in there. And that then tells me later, I filter by yes, that's my packing list. So I print out the packing list, bring it down to the equipment room, pull out all the equipment that I want, and I pile it all very willy-nilly, willy-nilly, some kind of um, unrandom kind of pile, just sitting over there, all of my equipment. I then use that checkoff list to move it from this side of the room to this side. Once everything is checked off, I know everything I need to pack is over on this side. And I start the packing process, and I'll do a video on that later on how I actually back pack my backpack. <coughs> so I know um, one negative with electronics sometimes is that people will play music out loud, and it actually bothers the people around them, and that's not, that's not nice. It violates the seventh principle of leave no trace. I fully support that. So I always use earbuds to listen to my music or podcast. If you do hear me singing, uh, out loud is because I'm really enjoying uh, the song, but um, I don't do that very often. My son says that it causes his ears to bleed when he hears me sing. So usually I'm pretty quiet. I try not to bother other people. So let's talk about how I charge my equipment first. So what good is having electronics if you can't charge them? So what I've got is several battery banks. This is a RAV Power 26,800 milliamp. And this is a RAV Power 10,000 milliamp. I also have an anchor that's the same power as the large one, 26,800 milliamps. And I've got a small one, I'm not sure what it is, a couple thousand milliamps. It charges my phone maybe once or twice. And so those are the things I've got available to me. I do prefer the RAV Power charging bank, battery bank, <clears throat> more than the anchor. The uh, anchor does not allow pass through charging. That is, if you if you're charging the anchor, it cannot charge anything else. That's all you can do is charge it. Later, of course, you can plug things into it and charge it. The RAV Power allows me to plug all my devices into the battery, which will start charging my devices. And I can also at the same time charge the battery. I don't know that it actually increases the speed of the, the full charging, get everything charged. But if I plug it in at night, by morning, everything is fully charged if I use the RAV Power charging bank. If I use the anchor, only the anchor is fully charged, my devices or whatever they were at the night before. So that's why I like the, the RAV Power. It, they both weigh a pound, and that's, and that's a lot of weight for batteries. So 
Um, that's I take the RAV Power, it gives me the most functionality. I tested both of them, and they both charge my iPhone about, <coughs> about seven times, a little more than seven times. I've got an iPhone 12 mini, and it's perfect. Uh, at the end of a week, uh, I have no trouble. I've still got battery left over. I did get a USB volt and amp meter because I wanted to test and check out my charging blocks. Which ones are the most powerful? Because those are the ones I want to use. The more power they put out, the faster the battery banks will recharge or the faster your equipment will charge. So I did all kinds of testing. You should see here, uh, this battery bank is putting out uh, a little over five volts and about an amp and a half. And this is one of my better charging blocks. So this one goes with me because it will charge everything as quick as possible. I found out while I was doing my testing, because I did all kinds of swaps, um, different battery blocks, and also different cables. And this is what I found out that was really surprising to me. I thought a charging cable is a charging cable, no big deal. There's a significant difference in how much power the charging cable will allow to pass. So not only did I have to find my most powerful charging blocks, I had to find the most powerful or the most, I don't know, not powerful, most compatible uh, or charge friendly charging cords. So I take two of those, two for each connector type, and I take those with me, I pack them in different bags so they're separated. I don't need to have a, a cable break that weighs nearly nothing, and then I'm unable to charge my phone, unable to charge my GPS or recharge my headlamp, that kind of thing. So I do duplicate my charging cords. Just in case I am at a hostel where there's uh, limited charging ports or charging outlets, I made myself this little um, extension cord. So if somebody is using the last and final uh, power outlet, I can plug this into that and then still support me and whoever had the outlet before me. When I'm traveling internationally, I take this plug converter. You can kind of see that the ends are round. What it does is you can plug your charger or your extension cord into that. It converts the flat blade that we have here in the States to the round one found in most other countries. Our equipment, our devices, are rated from 100 to 240 volts. And so this works fine. That won't be a problem. Please check your own device though to make sure it is rated for 100 to 240. I don't want you to burn up your equipment. That wouldn't be much fun. I did have that happen where I had the wrong voltage and I um, blew out a transformer, popped the fuse in the building. Uh, so don't do that. Uh, learn from my mistakes. One thing to keep in mind, once your phone, your headlamp, your GPS, Bluetooth headsets, whatever they are, are fully charged, they continue to draw a little bit of current. Not a lot, but they do continue to draw current. So you don't necessarily want to plug it in a battery or the, <coughs> if your phone is 80% charged, plug it in and then leave it charging all night long. You'll be wasting a small percentage of your battery capacity. So it might be better to have it charged while you're hiking in the morning, that type of thing. I've got several devices I frequently bring on campouts, and it varies if I'm doing it overnight by myself, it's different than if I'm doing a month long with a group of people. And so I make the decision as I'm packing if, if a certain piece of equipment is appropriate or not for the trip I'm planning. So first thing I've got is a fairly heavy Olympus TG4 camera. I really like the pictures it takes, movies and the still pictures, uh, quality is great. And with the replaceable SD cards, I can take as many pictures as I want. It does have a unique charging cord. It's not an industry standard uh, USB kind of cord. So if I, I take the camera, I have to take this extra cord. I found on both, <coughs> excuse me again, I uh, found them both on the King's Trail last summer on my AT section hike this summer that my camera has enough memory on it to hold all the pictures I need for uh, a month not a problem. So that, that camera actually I don't bring very often. I also have rechargeable headlamp and this is 450 lumens. You don't need 450 lumens. I wanted a really bright headlamp and so I, I picked this up. Um, 250 maybe 350 lumens at most. I, with this one you could drive a race car through the woods at dark and you can see everything. It lights up the entire camp. You don't need that. 
Uh, so maybe 250 lumens. It is rechargeable, and that was the key that I wanted when I bought this one. I wanted one that was rechargeable. Before that, and still one of my favorites, is this Petzl, the both of them are Petzl. Look how small it is. It takes up no space. It does run off of, uh, it was a CR2032 battery, I think. It's not rechargeable, and it's great in your tent. It's got the red light on it. It also has white light. It's not very bright. You could night hike with it. Uh, I wouldn't want to do it with real rocky terrain, but kind of smooth terrain. Not a problem. You could night hike with it. You can for sure set up your camp, make food, clean up your camp if you're getting up early in the morning with this light. And, and of course, anything inside the tent is fine. I do carry extra batteries for it. And so that's a, a weight that adds into it. It is very light though, and I really like it. I do listen to music or podcasts while I'm hiking or I'm around camp doing chores. And what I've got now that I really like, it used to be called Aftershocks, and I, they may have just recently changed their name or their product name to Shocks. And fits on just like this. Notice it doesn't go in the ear. Instead, it vibrates through the bones. So that means I can have the volume set kind of quietly and still hold conversations with people. I can still hear animals. I can still hear the birds. It is possible that you do need to be careful. You don't want to turn up the volume too loud. It will overwhelm the rest of your hearing. And so you do want it to be at a, a nice, easy listening kind of level. Really like this, the battery in this lasts three days before it needs to be recharged. And that's not, you know, 24 hours a day use, but a normal, use it while I'm hiking, while I'm using camping. In three days, it'll start telling me it's time to charge. I also carry the wired earbuds. Now these I don't actually like for hiking because they, they come up from my phone and they get in the way. The, the cable is there, I keep catching it with my arms, it'll catch on tree branches. So I don't like those, I like the, the wireless Bluetooth a lot better. These I will use at night because I'll go to sleep listening to a podcast or listening to music and then I'm not using battery up uh, the Bluetooth. And uh, my tent allows me to put the, the phone up above and I can just listen to this. In the winter, I've got some Bluetooth earmuffs, and these are great. Keeps my ears warm, and I can listen to music. I also use these when I'm riding my bike in the winter. It, uh, the wind doesn't bother my ears then. The last thing I carry is my Garmin inReach, and this, I've never actually run it all the way down. After about three days, it's down to maybe 50% and then I want to charge it up because this is my lifeline to the rest of the world. I don't want that to get be low or near low at all. And so it, it actually would probably last nearly a week just having um, tracking set on to uh, once an hour. So at every, hour, every hour it's sending out a signal and it's listening for messages all the time, that kind of thing. So those are the devices I carry. And that's how I keep them charged. Uh, what alternatives do you have for electronics? Of course, I understand you could always just leave them at home. And that's a, certainly an alternative for many. So, so um, share your ideas down below. And I'm always interested in learning what other people do so, so that I can try it. So thanks for watching. 